Today I'm gonna bake bread, sourdough olive bread. Since you are here, you most likely love sourdough bread too, just like me. This is one of my favorite bread recipes and definitely the easiest and the fastest one. Well, because first it doesn't use a levain, which typically involves pre-fermenting a portion of your flour for a very long time, quite often up to 12 hours. Secondly, it doesn't require an autolyse, nor does it require to laminate your dough in order to incorporate the olives. I'll start by feeding my starter. I keep mine in the fridge because I don't use it daily. When I want to make bread, I just take it out. For this loaf of bread, I'm going to need 80 grams of active starter. In the jar, I have around 40 grams of cold, dormant starter that I'm going to mix with equal amounts of water and flour. This is cold 100% hydration starter. I'm going to let it rest on the counter in a warm spot for anywhere between 4 to 6 hours, depending on how warm my kitchen is. My starter is made with 100% whole einkorn flour. It won't raise as much as a starter fed with white regular wheat flour, but I know when it's ready when it is very bubbly and looking like a mousse. So guys, after feeding it, I have in total 120 grams of active starter. As I said, I only need 80 grams. When my starter is ready, I'll keep the 80 grams I need for my loaf and the other 40 grams will go back in the jar in the fridge until I'm ready to bake again. In a large bowl, I'm mixing 80 grams of active starter along with 375 grams of warm water. I like to warm it up in a tea kettle and let it cool a bit on the counter. Do not add hot water, you will most likely kill your starter. When it is barely warm to the touch, I pour it over my starter. You can also check the temperature if you want to be accurate. Make sure it is around 91 degrees Fahrenheit. Personally, I would never go above 95 degrees since the yeast might produce some off flavors. After whisking a bit, I add 10 grams of salt and mix again. Now it's time to add my flour. I'm using a total of 500 grams. I usually like a mixture of white flour and whole einkorn flour. You can definitely use only white bread flour, this way you will end up with a more open crumb sourdough. It is also easier to work with. Using einkorn or whole wheat makes your bread a little more dense, but it definitely compensates in flavor and nutrition. I prefer a 60 to 40 ratio, meaning 300 grams of bread flour and 200 grams of whole einkorn flour. But you can play with the ratio however you like. If it's your first time using einkorn, I recommend you start with not more than 20% since ancient wheat varieties or any whole wheat flours for the matter act a bit different than white flour. After adding my flour, I mix around 2 minutes until all the ingredients are well incorporated. Do not panic if your dough looks shaggy, this is absolutely normal. Just cover your bowl with a wet kitchen towel and let it rest for 30 minutes. Now I'm going to perform a dough strengthening technique called the stretch and fold method. I'm gonna do a set every 30 minutes with 4 sets in total. So 30 minutes after mixing water, flour, salt and starter together, it's time for my first set. Each set calls for 4 stretches and 4 folds, one in each direction, north, south, east and west. First I dip my hands in water, then I pick up a side of the dough, stretch it and fold it over. As you can see the dough is weak and falls apart readily which is normal at this stage. Now I give the bowl a one quarter turn and repeat until I have come full circle to complete all four folds. 
I cover the dough and wait another half an hour until the next set. Ok, now it's time for my second set. My dough is already looking better compared to the first set, it holds its shape better and is definitely more elastic. After I perform all four folds and stretches, I cover again the bowl and wait another 30 minutes. I will incorporate the olives with my third set, so I'm prepping 15 olives. I prefer Kalamata olives, but you can use any type of pitted olives you like. A mix would be also nice. The secret is to drain them very well. I cover them with a paper towel and press them gently in order to remove as much brine as possible. Then I chop them finely. It's time to perform the third set. Before each stretch, I will spread a handful of chopped olives, then fold to incorporate them into the dough. At the end, I like to do a quick window paint test. I pinch the dough and grab a small portion, then I flatten it between my fingers. The goal here is to stretch the dough in a very thin and see-through layer until at some point it tears. This lets you know how strong and elastic your dough is. As you can see, my dough is pretty elastic, but not quite there. Although it stretches nicely, it is not thin enough and it tears too fast. It still needs another set of stretches and folds. Be careful, your dough might be different if you use a 100% white bread flour. If this is the case, you may stop after the third one and let it ferment untouched until you have a smooth, airy dough. My dough has rested for 30 minutes and it's now time for another round of stretches, hopefully my last one. It rarely happened to me to do more than 4 sets, but if the window pane test fails again, I will likely need another round. With my last stretches, I can feel that my dough has become more plump and jiggly. That's how I know the technique is working. After my last fold, I do another quick test. As you can see, the dough stretches nicely and I can see my finger through it, so I'm pretty satisfied. I'm going to stop here and transfer my dough to another dish greased with a little olive oil and let it bulk ferment covered for almost 2 hours. My room temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. You might need more or less time depending on several factors like your room temperature, the flour you used or how strong your starter is. Bulk fermentation is done. My dough has risen significantly. It has lots of bubbles on top and on the sides it is smoother and the surface looks a bit like a dough. When I press gently, the dough feels elastic and puffy. Now I will flip it carefully onto my work surface and do a light pre-shaping. After that, I will let it rest 20 minutes. This is commonly called the bench rest. During this time, the gluten relaxes and facilitates the final shaping.
a few minutes before the final shaping, I liberally flower my Benetton basket. If you don't have one, no worries, just use a round bowl lined with a clean kitchen towel. Now it's time to shape. I will bake my loaf as a boule, meaning a round shape. There are many ways to shape a boule. This is how I like to do mine, especially when working with a soft, sticky dough like this one. After pre-shaping, my dough has relaxed nicely. I'm gently stretching it into a rectangle. Then I'm grabbing the bottom side and fold it towards the center. I then take the opposite side and fold it over into the middle, overlapping the other side that was just folded. Starting at the top of the cylinder, I gently grab the left and right corners, then stretch them over each other so they form an X shape on top of the dough. This is called a stitch. I repeat this stitch a few more times until I reach the bottom of the dough. With both hands, I then begin rolling it down, pushing gently to tighten it. Now I cup my hands around the sides of the dough and slowly drag it towards my body. I will keep rotating until I have a round shape and all seams are sealed. When I'm done, I transfer my bowl to a Benetton basket seam side up. After that, it's time for the second rise or final rise. I need a freshly baked loaf of bread today, so I will do the final rise at room temperature. I will leave it out on the counter for about one hour and a half. Instead of proofing at room temperature, you can also opt to cold ferment your dough. This is typically done overnight in the fridge. Thirty to forty minutes before final rise is done, I will place a heavy pot with lid in my oven and preheat it to 420 degrees Fahrenheit. It needs to be very hot when I add my bread. It's time to bake now. My dough looks just about right. Before baking, just to be sure the final rise is done, I like to do a quick poke test. My dough has a high percentage of whole einkorn flour, so it's not as elastic and airy as an all-white flour dough. Although it's on the sticky side, it still springs back slowly, but not quite filling in the indentation, which is absolutely fine for a high hydration whole wheat dough. Before baking, I prep my utensils. Parchment paper flour for dusting, scoring blade, and a spray bottle filled with chilled water. I'm dusting the top of the dough with flour, then I flip it upside down onto my parchment paper. At this point, I am very gentle because I don't want to deflate my bowl. I am dusting again with flour and quickly score my bread in a square pattern. After that, I need to be very quick, otherwise my bowl will spread excessively. I take my pot out of the oven and carefully transfer the dough. Before covering with the lid, I will lightly mist the top of the bread using a spray bottle. If you don't have a spray bottle, you can also pour half a tablespoon of cold water in the pot. 
I want to trap all the steam inside my Dutch oven, so I immediately put the lid on. I will bake at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 minutes. After that, I will take the lid off and bake for another 25 minutes. Here it is guys, it has a nice oven spring and it's really crusty. It doesn't have as many blisters as my cold fermented breads but still a good amount. The crust has a deep walnut color and crackles when gently squeezed. I will let it cool on a wire rack for at least an hour before slicing it. Now that it has cooled enough, I want to quickly check the inside. The bread has an even crumb and the holes are uniformly distributed, with no massive spots or dense spots. It has ample rich flavors coming from the einkorn and a salty soury kick from the olives. The texture is light and tender with no gumminess. It is the perfect recipe for those who never baked sourdough bread before and feel intimidated by all the steps and all the terminology around sourdough baking. So if you are one of them, please don't. I've been there too and to be honest, this was the main reason why I was so reluctant to start making sourdough. With this recipe, I just wanted to show you that you don't need to be perfect, you don't even need to follow all the steps by the book in order to obtain a delicious loaf of bread. Is this going to be your best sourdough recipe? Of course not, but it is definitely the fastest and the easiest too. I also guarantee you, if you start making your own sourdough, it will taste at least 10 times better than your average supermarket bread and your family will ask for more. Thank you for having the patience to stay until the end. See you next week guys. Bye!